All right. Um, I sent you the PowerPoint for you guys to work on your units 7 through 13. And I will say that I did not do this very well, so I want to redo this with you. I want to fix this because I don't like the way that um, I don't like the way this turned out, and I think it's a little confusing for you guys. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to go to this slide right here and I'm going to put a new slide underneath it. All right, for unit seven, these are some of the things that you need to answer. Um, I think what I want to do is maybe just make these like discussion prompts or questions and rephrase these for you so that you can have a little bit easier time answering them. And I'm gonna give you a couple of different options for doing it. I'm going to probably just change the questions on here and then what we'll do is you can have the option of doing it in PowerPoint form where you have this blank slide right here where you just start answering your questions or if you would rather do it on a Word document you can just copy and paste those questions and then put them underneath it there. One way or the other it does not matter to me whichever way you're most comfortable with is how I want you to do this. And remember that you're still working in your groups or with your partners, so you don't have to answer all of these as long as all of you have the answers on your presentation. Okay, again, we're going to change these into questions that are going to be a little bit easier for you to answer. Uh, for example, the 7A, uh, the whole point of Unit 7 is determining methods that promote an effective family unit. So we're talking about a family unit and how they work together. Um, A is very self-explanatory. Describe diverse family structures. You know that there are different family structures in everybody's family. We talked a little bit about it yesterday. We've got single parent homes. We've got uh, mom and dad homes, we've got grandma and grandpa living in the house or whatever, aunts and uncles, we've got all different kinds of family structures out there. So I want you to talk about some different types of family structures. Now for these questions you can make a list if you want to. You don't necessarily have to write a paragraph or a bunch of sentences. You can make a list to answer these. Bullet points are fine. All right, uh, B says, identify the function of individuals within the family. Everybody in the family has different jobs. They have different roles in that family. And whether we like that word roles and functions or not, they exist. All right, you know, what is your mom's role in the family? What is your dad's role in the family? What is your role in the family? Okay, uh, what is your guardian, your aunt, your uncle, whoever it is? What is their role in the family? You know, how do you... What is the role of your brothers and sisters or cousins or whatever? All right. Whether we like that word or not, we know that roles exist. So what are some of those? Uh, C says, compare the functions of families in various cultures. What you might need to do for this one is you might want to Google uh, family structures in different cultures and you might even find one article that compares them for you so that you can go in there and say hey you know what's the family structure like in an Asian country what's the family structure like um, in a European country and then you can kind of compare those because honestly you know the American culture we have all different kinds of structures <laughs> because we have all different kinds of races and backgrounds and ethnicities. So we have all different kinds of family cultures and climates that come in here. So what you need to do is, I'm going to tell you to, again, Google um, functions of families or, or different types of family culture in other countries. And again, chances are you will come up with some kind of article that gives you a comparison that you can take some notes from. And it pick at least three different cultures to compare. Okay, you can use yours. You can use um, and then find two others. You know, this is my family culture in America, and then talk about two different cultures. Now, that doesn't mean that these cultures don't exist in America, because they do. Uh, let's see. Um, 
predict the effects of societal, demographic, and economic trends on individuals in the family. So what you're going to need to do is break that into three parts. So effect of society trends, effect of demographic trends, and effect of economic trends on individuals and the family. And again, if you'll break those up and search for those, you will probably find an article that addresses all three. You need to know what societal means. Societal is society all around us. Demographic, that has to do with uh, race, culture, location, uh, level of income, and things like that. And then economic trends absolutely concentrates on the financial aspect of it. All right, E, determine procedures for meeting individual and family needs through resource management. First, you gotta find out what resource management is. Look that up. What is resource management within the home, within the family? And then what are some ways that you make sure that everybody's needs are met in that family by managing those resources? Okay, that's managing finances, that's budgeting within the household. Uh, F says, explain how technology influences family functions and relationships. All right, you guys have a background in that already. We do a lot with technology in here. So how does technology affect those relationships? Does it bring them closer? Does it tear them apart? Does it improve? Does it help? What are the good things about it? what are the bad things about it, okay? Because technology has a huge influence and it's both positive and negative. So you might want to list some, list some positives that technology does for the family and list some negatives. Then G says, determine the impact of effective family functioning on community and society. What happens to the world around you, the society around you, when your family functions well? Okay, you can be influential, right? What if your family is not functioning well? Can it affect the society around you? No or yes, which one? Or both? All right, well, I, I agree. I agree that no, it doesn't necessarily, but yes, it can have an effect. What if financial management is such that people are really, um, they just don't have what they need in their home? And that person goes to school feeling tired, hungry, not having what they need. Does it affect that person in the classroom? Can it affect the whole classroom if that person starts acting out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just giving you a little microcosm of a classroom example, but it's also society as a whole, okay? So start thinking about some of those things. Um, you can listen to this again later on so that you know how to break this into pieces. I will also finish this for you and I will kind of rewrite some of this on here, rephrase your questions for you, give you some pointers. And again, you have your choice of either doing these on your PowerPoint that you've already started or you can just answer these as questions in a Word document if you want to. But make sure that you're answering them thoroughly. Let's go ahead and take a look at Unit 8. I don't think you're gonna get past Unit 8. So I, I will be very happy if on Monday when you get back, you have already finished seven and try to finish eight on Monday. It says, I will determine how changes occurring throughout the family life cycle impact individuals and families. Do your family units change? Yeah, things happen, things change, right? I, I remember going from uh, j just a personal example of how life changed over the course of like five or six years. I went from being married and being in a place where all four of my kids were together and not only was it us, but it was my in-law, uh, the in-law grandparents and everything. So we were all together. Then that changed and it was just me and the kids. And then that changed again whenever I went for a year to go, when I went for a year to go stay home uh, and help take care of my mom. 
and then I moved here. And so life changes and your family life cycle, it, things change. Uh, you know, I wanted to really be there and help my mom, but I wasn't able to help her as much because I was at work all the time. And then, you know, so then I said, okay, well, I can't help her, but I can help my sister to help her and make sure my sister has what she needs and give her a break and take care of her because I'm not good at taking care of my mom. You know, she had a lot of medical issues. So that changed when my mom passed away and now I'm just there to check on my sister and say, hey, you, you know, it's been rough for you these last three or four years. You need to tell me what you need. You need to tell me how I can help you, all right? So things change and your life cycle of your family changes and you guys are getting, you're not little anymore. Mom and dad are not always having to micromanage everything you do. You're big enough now that you know how to make some good choices. So they're not having to micromanage. You feel like they're micromanaging you, but they do let you go to the bathroom by yourself and make snacks by yourself and stuff like that, where when you're little, they didn't. All right, it says describe the stages of the family life cycle. What you need to do there is you need to Google family life cycle and you need to find out what that is. I bet that there is an article out there that will help you. Let's see, examine the roles and responsibilities of individuals and family members throughout the family life cycle. Again, we're talking about roles and responsibilities. Now, we've already answered that mostly on unit seven, but I do want you to compare it to the family life cycle and how those roles change. When you were little, you weren't expected to do chores around the house except maybe pick up your toys. But you're older now, your role has changed. You're expected to help out, you're expected to do more things. Uh, C, analyze financial considerations related to the family life cycle. Okay, so again, take that family life cycle and talk about finances or money that affects those things. D, predict the effects of technological advances on families throughout the family life cycle. Again, talk about the effect of technology, both positive and negative. And then E says, formulate a plan for effective management of technology on families throughout the family life cycle. Maybe you guys all sit down to dinner, but everybody's on their devices. Does that mean you're having dinner together? Yes. You're in the same room, but are you actually communicating with each other? Okay, but what I'm saying is, that's great, but what about that verbal communication where you're actually looking at someone in the eye, talking to them, watching their body language, things like that? Yes, ma'am. FaceTiming is awesome. All right, now, this says effective management of technology. I'm not saying that we do away with it. I'm saying, how can you manage it? Or maybe you could have that time at dinner and we say, you know what, everybody has to put their cell phones down. This is dinner time, we're gonna sit here together. That's what I mean by coming up with a plan. Now, technology is also wonderful because when you're at school, if there's an emergency or something at home, your parents can get to you very quickly and say, hey, there's this going on, I need you to make sure that you ride the bus or that you wait for so-and-so to pick you up or whatever it is. You have that. So again, technology is good, but it is also bad. It's very positive and effective, but it can also tear apart some things because it can be very negative. So I want you to look at both sides of that. Now before, before I close this one out, are there any questions about Unit 7 or Unit 8? Do you understand what it is that we're looking for on this? Did the explanation help? Yes. All right. Then what I want you to do is you're going to work on Unit 7, try to finish that up today and tomorrow, and then Unit 8 on Monday. And again, you may work with your partners or your groups as long as everybody has complete answers for every question. You don't necessarily have to go look them all up yourself. If your partner's not here, then you're on your own. Okay? All right, uh, let me stop this video right here. I'm gonna post this so that you guys can go and watch it later if you need to.